When I was growing up long ago, I was about a teenager at a time when the astronauts were landing on the moon. We told and, and taught that it is not an uh, appropriate place to visit. And my, re my reaction was, uh, how will the elders respond? Four great mountains, hundreds of miles apart, mark the external boundary of our homeland. These were placed on Mother Earth by the holy people, who made them repositories of the herbs, plants, stones, and soil that go into the medicine bundles, still used to heal our people and to restore our lives to harmony. Cisnajini to the east, near Alamosa, Colorado, is the White Shell Mountain that is represented by the corn plant, springtime and birth. The bear is the guardian of Cisnajini. The second mountain of the south is Turquoise Mountain, represented by the bean plant and the mountain lion. It represents summer and youth. The name of the mountain is Tzotzil. The third mountain is the Kooslid, near Flagstaff, Arizona, and Abalone Shell Mountain. This mountain is represented by the squash plant, the fall season, and adulthood. The wolf and bull snake are the guardians of this mountain. The last mountain to the north is the Benza, near Durango, Colorado, and has the porcupine as its guardian. The sacred mountain tobacco is the plant, and the jet is the gem of the north. It represents old age and winter. That air, Gloria Begay, she and she, Twitch Eatney Angel, Tachini Abashis Jean, Lizislana Adish, she, Otto, Tubaha Adish, Nella. And this makes me a Navajo woman. In regards to the um, coming of the astronauts um, into Navajo country to do their space science studies and then even also visits to the moon. As I reflect on my youth and watching television in a classroom about the astronauts, you know, landing on the moon, I was very taken back about what are these guys doing out there in space. However, you know, knowing the sacredness of the moon and all of the solar system and everything for Navajo people, we also said, you know, wait a minute here. We need to step back and look at, are they protecting our rights as Navajo citizens with all this knowledge? And hopefully they're going to use whatever they're doing in a very uh, safe and protective way for all of humanity. I think it, the the training of the astronauts you know, for space missions is very important. I think uh, for the purpose of teaching our children, it's the exploration of the universe. In a way, it's the exploration of us too, our stories. For as Navajo people, since time immemorial, since our emergence, we've been relating to the stars the sun, the moon. So when 
the Apollo astronauts came here to the Southwest to train to travel in space, to explore the moon, the stars, I think it was very appropriate. It reminds my children, my people, that science is good, that knowledge is good, which our people, our elders, our medicine people have said all along. Uh, one of the, uh, my first uh, impression that I have had is that the growth of the scientific technology, that it is possible that they will be landing on the moon. But at the same time, that I uh, still carry on and believe uh, to, to, to a traditional perspective, the moon is one of the sacred places in the universe. Today's uh, NASA program, uh, Leaving Things on the Moon, uh, my attitude is, first of all, that I have been trying to uh, answer one particular question most of my life uh, about this uh, moon program. Uh, that is, why are we doing this? So what are we gaining from? Are we picking up things from the moon? Or is there a place where the people uh, will find a place to live over there? Or uh, now that we are teaching our children, the biggest question, unspoken question people uh, think about and talk about is, why are we doing it? If this why could be simplified and explained uh, to us as uh, traditionalists, then we uh, most likely would change our attitude. So why are we so interested in studying the moon and the universe around us? There are many reasons. But among those reasons is the desire to have a better understanding of our origins. We have good evidence now that the Earth and the Moon formed together in the early days of the solar system in a giant collision. Here on the Earth, we have what we call plate tectonics, continental drift. And so it's impossible to find rocks from the earliest days still here on the surface of the Earth. And so the Moon has rocks that are far, far older than we can find here on the Earth. These can tell us stories of these very early days. And so interestingly, if you want to learn about the earliest days of here on Earth, one of the best places to look is the moon. But that's just part of the story. We now understand how closely, how tightly bound we are to the rest of the universe. The calcium atoms in our bones the iron in our blood, the carbon atoms in the walls of our cells. All of these atoms were formed in stars that long ago blew themselves up and sent that material out into space where it swirled around for a long time and then finally condensed into what became our solar system and us. We are all made of stardust. And so if we want to really understand who we are and how we came to be, we need to look at the broader universe as a whole. The whole concept of the universe is wonderful for the students to learn because they gain a really wonderful appreciation of their place in the universe and them feeling so much better about, hey, you know what, this universe belongs to all of us and that, you know, I can contribute, I can learn from all of this wonderful information from the Navajo perspective because, you know, it's so deep rooted in understanding, compassion and really good relationships. The way to pursue knowledge about the stars, the moon, the sun, and the heavenly bodies, we already have our stories, which are very sacred. And we used it in everyday life since our emergence. There is the body of knowledge given to us by our brothers and sisters, not native. The two are actually one. 
Ask questions in the classroom. Go as far as you can in the study of what they've uncovered, what they've researched. But at the same time, come back to talk with our elders, our medicine people, and ask what is, what about this, about the moon, about the sun, about the stars and the heavenly bodies. That way, we have the knowledge of both worlds. And, and given that approach, I don't see how we can go wrong.